Well, thanks again, Leslie, for that introduction, and thanks all of you for spending part of this summer Friday afternoon with us. Uh, our topic today, as Leslie outlined, is considerations for the use of manure irrigation practices. And again, in addition to myself, you'll be hearing from Dr. Becky Larson, uh, Associate Professor at UW-Madison Biological Systems Engineering, and also Dr. Tucker Birch, who's further north in Wisconsin and Marshfield as a research engineer at the USDA ARS. I'm going to begin with an overview where this Wisconsin manure irrigation uh, issue came from and the work group that we convened to address it. Uh, Becky then is going to go into some more detail about the practices and the variety of considerations and issues that we were exploring in this, uh, in this project that we were involved with. Tucker is going to talk about a parallel study that happened uh, overlapping with this effort, focused specifically on airborne pathogen drift, uh, and we'll provide some details there and conclusions and findings from that. And then I'm going to come back and talk about some recommendations that emerged from this work group process uh, as guidance for uh, jurisdictions who are wrestling with this issue and possibly how to move forward. So let me just first begin by clarifying what we mean by manure irrigation. Manure irrigation refers to the practice of applying livestock manure or process wastewater through irrigation equipment. It generally involves pumping the liquid manure from a storage area through pipes or hoses to equipment that's conventionally used for irrigation. So uh, what does that look like? Uh, center pivot irrigation uh, of manure looks like this or can. Uh, here is application through an end gun on a center pivot. Again, another view of a center pivot produ producing a uh, droplets coming out uh, of, of manure irrigation. Uh, of course, this is a, a very liquid application when you're talking about manure irrigation with a relatively low solids content. Beyond center pivot, traveling gun is another commonly used method for applying uh, manure and processed wastewater. Uh, this is what it looks like in operation. And then, uh, what is this? Uh, this is something that's similar. It's high, uh, relatively high off the ground uh, dropping of, of a liquid manure so we also considered in some of our work uh, the definition of manure irrigation. Does this fit or are we just thinking about uh, those other methods that I showed you? And again, we'll get into more of that uh, in a little detail. So let me just set the stage for why we began this work and, uh, and, and what we were addressing. I think it was 2011, a large CAFO uh, was pursuing permits for an operation, to site an operation in southern Wisconsin, and they included in their manure management plan uh, the request to use manure irrigation and groups that were opposed to this operation or who were uh, looking for changes uh, focused in on that and raised some concerns about it at the time uh, that was eventually dropped from that uh, application and so the the urgency in 2011 sort of died away uh, shortly after that a group of state agencies recognizing that there may be more of these coming in the future convened a technical committee to begin looking at what do we know about manure irrigation practices, what might be some of the public health risks, uh, what might be some water quality concerns, and they got a meeting or two into that process and then um, the effort was cut short when a variety of concerned citizens and organizations uh, objected to that approach and requested uh, a more inclusive approach that would be representative of a broader set of interests and concerns. So. These were the kinds of things that they were talking about at the time. Uh, these were issues that were identified by the public kind of leading up to the beginning of our effort. Uh, concerns had specifically to do with public health risk from airborne pathogens and other contaminants. What's in this manure that's being applied? By the way, I should clarify, it was a dairy operation that, was, uh, that sparked this and, and our work focused primarily on, on dairy. Uh, other concerns were drift, of course, odor and related quality of life concern with ability to use property and experience life outdoor, uh, concerns about surface water quality, groundwater quality, and then broad issues about even if we were to put in rules that people were comfortable with, what about implementation and compliance with those um, uh, by, by producers. So that was in contrast to what we were seeing as possible benefits from the practice, which Focused on the three things you see here, the timing of manure application. Uh, we've seen a lot in Wisconsin, wetter springs, uh, and 
difficulty getting manure applied to fields in the spring. We've also seen a rush of application of manure in the fall. So traditionally we have heavy loading in the spring, heavy in the fall, and there's a, a difference that uh, is opened up with manure irrigation. Road safety and redu reduced uh, road damage from potentially moving manure hauling off of the roads and through pipes and, and distribution systems. And then there were a variety of farm management and economic benefits that were perceived by producers. So this work group was building on the context of, of that conversation. And we convened four years ago, five years ago now, uh, in spring of 2013, with a purpose specifically to the review the broad issues and develop guidance on practices of applying livestock manure or process wastewater through irrigation equipment, so manure irrigation. The audience for our work was state and local agencies or officials interested in concerned stakeholders who wanted to know more about this practice and producers interested in manure irrigation and how it might fit into their operation. The work group was really looking broadly at those issues, benefits, concerns, and also wanting to highlight remaining questions that would emerge from this conversation. We decided as a work group that we would pursue consensus. We were a consensus seeking group on any recommendations or findings that would emerge from our effort. And we wanted to produce this overall guidance that would be relevant for especially like, uh, local and state officials, but uh, really anybody interested in establishing policy around this issue. Uh, I wanted to highlight here, as I have throughout the existence of this group, which, which stopped a few years ago, uh, that the work group itself had no formal authority to establish policy. We were establishing, compiling information, uh, hopefully adding value to that, and then uh, recognizing that any guidance or recommendations that we would come forth with would have to go through additional public scrutiny as they became uh, pulled into local or state, um, state law. So our work group was fairly diverse, especially compared to the initial technical committee that was pulled together. We had three uh, researchers and faculty from UW-Madison, and uh, all of us had extension connections uh, at Madison. One researcher from USDA-ARS, uh, that became two. Uh, USDA-NRCS was involved as well. Wisconsin DNR is our environmental regulatory organization. We had representatives from them, also from our Department of Agriculture, Trade, and Consumer Protection, focusing on agricultural issues, and our uh, Department of, of Health Services. We also had some local representation through county health departments, two of those, three dairy farmers that were participating throughout this work group, a professional agronomist who was a uh, service provider to dairies, a uh, nutrient applicator also in that position, and a, a member of the Organic Farming Concerned Citizen uh, community who was representing some of the uh, concerns that were raised about the first approach. And also a representative from the Wisconsin Land and Water Association, Conservation Association, which is our statewide representation essentially of conservation districts. We began with a couple of public meetings in, in May of 2013 when this began. That crystallized that list of initial concerns and benefits that I shared earlier. And that really framed uh, our agenda for how we would march through our, our series of meetings. After those forums, which were in public places and uh, I think reported, we had 16 meetings over the course of a couple of years um, by this work group. Uh, most of them were, were in Madison. We did move around for a couple of them. And concurrent with that, as I mentioned, was this pathogen drift study that was funded and supported by the ARS uh, and also UW-Madison and additional resources by our Department of Natural Resources. Uh, that was concurrent with this and ended uh, pretty much at the same time. So you'll hear, you'll hear more about that shortly. The uh, result of this, uh, in addition to the, the hours of, of really engrossing conversation and a lot of information and, and research, was a work group report. There's a link there at the bottom, and I believe uh, Leslie will be able to distribute this later, so if you're interested in more, uh, you can have a look at that. Uh, the work group report follows our initial charge and the major issues that we were working with. Begins with an overview of uh, what I've just said, what it is that we were all about, focusing then in on manure content, uh, how manure is managed and current regulations, focused primarily on Wisconsin. And then the variety of considerations that the work group addressed. And we'll be walking through some of these in a little bit more detail uh, over the next few minutes. We also included in that report as a way to to help people understand what we were talking about, a few scenarios. Uh, we find that 
these considerations, as you'll hear from Becky in a moment, sometimes contradict each other. So if you're trying to address one of those issues, that means that you're uh, exacerbating possible problems with another. So we talk about that complexity uh, as it plays out in a couple of different scenarios in the report. And then we provide a response to those initial concerns and benefits and uh, ultimately some recommendations. <clears throat> 